The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So I want to welcome you to our uh, Zoom worship. Some of the service has been recorded ahead of time, and we will, uh, we will worship by uh, receiving those people's offerings. And we will begin now with the reading and the first Psalm and the second reading, which have been prepared for us uh, by volunteers. So I'm gonna get ready to share that. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. 
as far as the east is from the west. So far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. In the name of the one holy living and triune God, amen. I set out to write a sermon today only to discover it's a really important sermon to preach and I'm not equipped to preach it. I thought about what is the purpose of Lent for us in this time of spiritual renewal, in this time of prayer, fasting and almsgiving, and I wanted to ask us, where do we find God in our lives? It's a question that we use a lot, trying to get people to reflect on their spiritual life. And I began to realize from that very practical point of view, I have never been prepared. Not in the theology that I have studied, uh, not in any of the spiritual direction that I myself um, have had. Um, it's, it's something that's pretty hard. And yet I think it's really important for us to say, where do we see God at work in our lives? Where do we see God at work in the world? 
of course, the apostles whose faith we have all adopted, either our parents adopted it for us or we adopted it ourselves, saw it in Jesus Christ and saw it in his resurrection. And in the saints whom we have studied since we were children and in our own blessed Elizabeth of Hungary, they too would have seen a God in Jesus. And so I think that is a place, a good place to start, is to ask what were the ways that Jesus behaved in the world? What were the things he did? What were the things he considered important? How, you know, that old trite phrase, people like to make fun of it, but it's really good. What would Jesus do? And I think if we just try to focus on that, that might be a help to look and see where God is active in my life, in your life, and in our, in our community. One of the places we're tempted is to go to a place where we think that just because good things happen, God must be involved in that. And when bad things happen, we must, we must have been wicked. No. That's not, that's not, I don't think that's wise. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that you're wrong if you really feel strongly about that, but I don't think that's wise. I think that a God who dies on the cross, God was as much at work in Jesus then as he is in the resurrection. I think God can be present at all times. And I said that mainly because of a parishioner I once met named Marcy, who struggled with cancer for five years. And I began to know her in about the last year and a half of her disease. And she had found so much peace with her faith in God. She had actually been a blessing. She had started uh, some can a cancer, uh, can not cancer, cancer, um, people who were coping with cancer, a, a group at the hospital that people attended and she'd become very well loved. And in the hospital itself, the staff themselves uh, really loved her. And she said to her, you know, um, I don't really consider that this can't, everyone, everyone will die. And I have, I have done my best with this cancer, but I have faith in, in God and I have peace about my death and my greatest sadness for me is that my family doesn't get it. My family doesn't understand that, yes, I'm going to die. They're constantly in denial. They're constantly figuring out ways to try to help me live. And so I realized that God was very much, even in the cancer uh, for Marcy, so, you know, we can't just say that it's, 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 God is not in the things that are hard or the things that at first seem bad. I think opening our eyes to see where God is active in our life might even be in times of great struggle and hardship, might be in times of questioning and doubt as well. So I really do think in Lent, I want to invite us all to ask, where is God a present for us? I did a little bit of work in my own life about where I felt God was present in my life. And when I was a child, I think God was present for me in Naomi Young and Elizabeth Rush. They were members of, they were members of my parish when I was growing up. And they were people of great faith, but they were also people of great love and gentleness and great devotion. And the kindness and the love I received from them, um, I'm pretty sure they laid the foundation of why I would want to become a priest and why I would want to be someone who tried to build up uh, the church, the body of Christ, because they witnessed to me a care and a, and a love and a gentleness that reached into me somehow into, and, and reached some of my better parts in me. And I think that, that they really honestly showed me God. I found God in their love, in their care, in their generosity, in, in their devotion and their attention. And but as I really began to think about it, and I think this is really appropriate for Lent, I think the place in my life where I have found God the most is in forgiveness. God makes room for me. You know, there have been so many times in my life when I felt um, unacceptable or unlovable for all kinds of reasons. Often it was because other people found uh, parts of me difficult to deal with. And then later on, there were parts of me which I think society found difficult to deal with. And I think the ability for God to make room for me to live and to know that I was loved 
even in the midst of things I didn't quite understand, I think I found God there. And then later on in forgiveness, when I uh, moved into L'Arche and I moved in with uh, intellectually disabled people. And I'm a person who's always valued the mind. I come from a family which in, 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 in values the mind, values education, um, and, and doesn't have much time for people who, who speak nonsense. I mean, that's just not where I come from. That's not the family I come from. Um, and, and, and so when I'm in a community where a lot of the people, you know, they don't, that's not, it's just, that's just not their gift, you know? That's not who they are. And I had to broaden my concept of who a human being is and what's important about being human. And forgiveness broke down the barriers. You know, I'm not just using forgiveness as though someone holds, says something wrong that they hold against you and you need, and you want them to let go of that. I'm using this idea that we can make room and I think I find God both in when I have been made room for, and now I have enough confidence that if somebody doesn't want to make room for me, I'm sorry they find that hard, but you know what? I'm beyond that anymore. I'm, 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 I am who I am. I am not perfect by any means. I say sorry frequently and well and often for the same thing over and over again. But I know that I am loved. And I know, and I know that. And now I know that other people who I might be tempted to not consider acceptable, you know what? Guess what? They are in God's eyes. And I think I find God in that forgiveness. You know, and, and that's my story. I, I really am hoping that we will be a people who equip ourselves in humility, right? Because, I mean, you know, People who say, I found God this morning in my teacup. I mean, you know, that doesn't, it, it, you, you don't want to trivialize this pursuit, nor do you want to be like exceptionally abundantly clear that you've, that you've arrived, that you've actually found God, because that would be somewhat arrogant. But I think in all humility and in all love looking, where do we discover the deep part of life? Where do we discover giftedness? Where do we discover challenge? Where do we discover God at work? And I think that, you know, now we can't hang out together during Lent, you know, we can't go to trivia night, we can't have potluck suppers. Maybe if we could get a candle and light it, if you didn't get it blessed at the candlemas service, you can always watch the candlemas service, it's still online. Get a candle and light it, get a devotional book, which has a tendency to, to say things that actually move you. Things that make us angry are often places where we might find God because when we get angry at something, that means there's something going on. <laughs> it's time to calm down and say, gosh, why did I get angry? What about that? I think that's valuable work for us to do during Lent so that we can allow God just open our eyes more to the activity of God in our lives. So I invite us to that among the other things that I'm about to invite you to for Lent. So with that said, I am going to deliver to you, dear people of God, the Lenten exhortation. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection and with a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. 
I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent. By self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. And to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now spend a time in silence before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. At this time, I invite you to very carefully open your package of ashes. Be careful, you know, there's a possibility they will spill. So I suggest you use a flat table, but just leave them in the in the package. Just get them open, and I will say a prayer to dedicate these ashes. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence. That we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Now you're going to you're going to get messy a little bit, but if you are with someone, I invite a person to take a bit of ash in their fingers and then to make a sign of a cross on the other person's forehead. And then if you're by yourself, I suggest you go ahead and, and do that for yourself.
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness and your great compassion. Blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. Wash me through and through from my sin. My wickedness, for I know and my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Deliver, <clears throat> give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. We will now say together the litany of penitence which is found the text will also be on the screen and i invite all of the participants to mute your um mute your session and say the parts in bold where you are it begins with a confession and then at the end i will um, i will pronounce the absolution Most holy and merciful Father, most holy, holy and, and merciful, merciful Father, Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth, that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship, 
and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please unmute yourself. <coughs> Usually it's done at the bottom left. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. So let's have some chaotic peace giving right now. Peace, <laughs> Patty. Peace. Peace, Laura. Peace. Peace, Robert says. Peace, 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 everybody. Peace, All Joy. Right. You too. <laughs> Peace, everyone. Oh,
will be chaotic. I think it is nice for us all to unmute ourselves and to pray as our Lord and Savior taught us, even though our voices will overlap and we will be in different places. Let us pray as our <laughs> Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, give us our precious 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 bread, let us bow our hearts before the Lord. Grant, most merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> The service is ended.